A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Wheelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Wheelan Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT. An unprecedented effort to keep us safe, but it's still hurting our businesses and some of our friends who are home for work. Business and a pandemic in the cities. It's amazing to see how quickly our entire society can be interrupted, put on hold, and even canceled due to a tiny virus. We hope you are taking extra precautions to stay healthy. Today on The Cities, we're doing the same by taping our guests in different parts of the studio. It's an effort to provide you with new information while staying safe and socially responsible. The coronavirus has many impacts. Obviously, the most important is our health, the limiting of the virus, and the quick treatment of any patient who becomes sick. But there are other impacts as well. Sports canceled, schools closed, travel restricted, and thousands of businesses, millions of workers idled. Here in the cities, a group of health, business, and civic leaders are spearheading an effort to coordinate the local response to the COVID-19 virus threat. And we'll feature different members in the weeks ahead. But we start with two people who have a connection to the business community and a direct impact on what this virus is doing to our area. And joining me is Tyler Power, who's the Director of Government Affairs for the Quad Cities Chamber of Commerce, and Sherry Ristaw of the Quad Cities Community Foundation. Thank you both for joining us. Yeah. Thank, you, Jim. Thank you. Tyler, let me start with you. And we're talking about this COVID-19 coalition that we have right now in the Quad Cities. What is the point of that? What are you trying to accomplish? The, the point of the coalition is to help give not only our businesses, but also the residents uh, and the people who live in our region um, one voice and to try to cut through a lot of the things that we hear day in and day out of a very complex situation that changes what seems like every minute. So we brought together a lot of different community uh, stakeholders and a lot of experts within our community to make sure that uh, everybody is getting the right information at the right time so they can make the best decisions that they need to. Because as we've seen, as this has just started, uh, Tyler, is that the, the misinformation spreads very quickly. Yeah, it, it, it almost uh, spreads just as quick as the virus is what I like to think of it as. And so we want to make sure that people are getting the correct information at the right times so they can make the right decisions, whether they're a business owner, whether they are uh, worried about their kids in their school, uh, getting a paycheck from work, all of those things. We need to make sure that we're all on a level playing field and we're all fighting the same fight, um, which is COVID-19 and ensuring that everybody in the Quad Cities is going to be successful once this uh, pandemic is over. Well, Sherry, once again, the Community Foundation is stepping up. We, we heard from you so loudly last year during the floods of 2019 mm. to right. make sure that it was more of a community coordinated effort to right. help our neighbors. Right. You're now at it again. Right. So we uh, last week uh, activated our activated the community's disaster recovery fund and I think it's important for people to know that the Community Foundation and the United Way, you know, we're working uh, together to uh, redirect our resources. Uh, we're raising funds um, to really help those that are in the, you know, in dire need. We know that the need, the need is here. We know that people are already, there's loss of employment. There are people and populations of our community, whether it's the elderly, our children, um, and even the organizations that are uh, working with those populations, we know that they need support and they need it now. Well, and let's so be honest, let's start there because as we know, this virus isn't going away anytime soon. So you have an immediate, a direct response and then a long-term response. Exactly. And Sherry, let me start with the short term. What is being offered, what can be offered at this point? Well, we, um, through the, um, through the fund that's been set up, the community fund that's been set up that we're working, um, the, the foundation and the United Way working together, we are making funds available. We simplified the application process. Uh, we'll be making, to back up a minute, we're, we're gonna be making grants to organizations who can help people and get, 
get help, um, get the money in the hands of people who can help people. Um, and again, I'm talking about the populations of, in greatest need right now, today, um, and right away. Uh, so we're, we're simplifying our grant process, we're simplifying the decision-making process. Uh, we are doing everything we can, again, to both raise money and then get the money out uh, for um, organizations that are working with, uh, with people. Okay, and in a moment we'll talk a little bit more about how people can apply and who can apply. And, and Tyler, let's talk a little bit about the immediate ramifications to businesses. Um, you are a part of government affairs for the Quad Cities Chamber. The federal government is taking the big lead right now, and once again, this is a very fluid uh, situation. Yeah, it, it's, it's very fluid and it's changing, it seems like, every hour. The federal government, I think that uh, the viewers can look at um, some, some new dialect that is gonna start coming out. It's gonna be different phase approach. Phase one approach from the federal government was a response uh, in January that was more of an immediate, sh very short term response. Phase two is a more robust response that includes uh, paid leave, paid family leave, uh, different changes to unemployment benefits and who can apply for them. That's all changed in the phase two. Phase three is gonna be a really big initiative and that's gonna help correct where the economics are coming from. Uh, there have been numbers of 700 billion, um, north of $1 trillion um, across the country uh, to help mitigate the effects of COVID-19. But here in the Quad Cities, we've already seen uh, some of those impacts, whether they're a restaurateur, uh, hospitality, uh, everything in between has impacts from COVID-19. And the chamber is really pushing to uh, tell the people of our region to say, we really should be uh, shopping local when you do go out, be safe, follow the CDC guidelines, um, but still be a part of uh, our economy, still uh, get takeout when you can, um, and help our local businesses because this is gonna be a, a, a fight that we've never had to experience uh, in generations, if at all, uh, and, and we wanna see all of our small businesses succeed and be there for us once this is over. Well, and Tyler, I mean, you really do underline the fact that, I mean, let's be honest, this is now very much a service economy. Um, and when you have a disruption in a service economy, whether it's stores or whether it is spas or, as you said, bars and restaurants, it's impacting a lot of people immediately. Absolutely. It, it's, it's not only affecting um, the employees, but it's also affecting uh, the businesses that are members of the Quad Cities Chamber. And so we, we're in constant contact with them on how to make sure that they're connected to the right resources, uh, whether it's on a federal level, state level, um, on a local level. We've been in contact with our elected officials uh, daily and ensuring that we're getting the right information. And our elected officials here locally have been a great resource. Um, they've always been very open to not only the chamber, but to our members uh, to help make sure that the messages are there and ensure that people are gonna be uh, safe as well as uh, economically safe afterwards of this uh, COVID-19. Well, Sherry, the Community Foundation last week announced that it was reactivating this uh, disaster okay. relief fund. And let's be honest, for a lot of people last week or a week and a half ago, people were thinking, oh, this is much ado about nothing. <laughs> what made you think so early yeah. on that, wait a second, we really oh. have to be activated right now? You know, I think we were seeing what our colleagues across the country were doing, other community foundations, good friends, colleagues, and um, we just, we were just trusting our gut, um, to be honest, and knowing that we absolutely have to move. Um, we, we, just, we were seeing the, the needs almost immediately, the reactions um, of people, both in our community, but you know, across the state, or our, our bi-state region, um, as well as the, you know, of course, the country. And um, we just, we wanted to act. What, you know, we just wanted to make sure that we had something in place uh, to immediately start receiving money. Um, and you know, and we, you know, both uh, our boards have stepped up. They have made commitments. Uh, I got to give hats off to the Regional uh, Development Authority, our RDA, who matched um, dollars immediately that were going in. Um, and just several businesses that we contacted who also, I think, knew, you know, um, you know, by Thursday, we knew something serious was going on and, and we just, we acted. That's, 
that's our job. That's to respond to the community and what's what's happening uh, to our our bi-state community. Well, and as you mentioned, I mean, you started with seed money of hundred thousand dollars, and as you said, the RDA, the Regional Development Authority, uh, pitched in immediately with another hundred thousand. Right. You've been asking other organizations, right. businesses, right. Uh, community groups to give right. as well. That pot of money is growing. That is, we're we're up to about two hundred and sixty thousand now, and and it's growing. Um, uh, we are just spearheading additional uh, campaigns around giving to this. Remember, this is a it's really this is a really hard time to be asking businesses to give. So, we're really looking at in businesses and individuals um, to really go above and beyond. You know, um, I can't say enough about this community's generosity. Time and time again, this community, the the Quad Cities. In my um, short experience here, has just totally stepped up to meet the needs of our community and the needs of the the people who really need help. And so um, I am so um, impressed, and really, um, I am so humbled by the businesses that are already giving and stepping up. And um, even when they're they know they're going to be hurting, or they are already hurting, and they're they're doing what they can to give back to the community through the through this fund for the uh, community through for the community foundation in the United Way. And and Sherry, let, let's be honest. I mean, we're all kind of going through uncharted territory <laughs> right now. But in some ways, you must have a bit of a game plan because of last year's floods. Yes, absolutely. Because of that, you know, um, and we've tweaked it even as we go, and we're tweaking it even today. Um, but is you know making that application process easier, but really thinking through what are the you know uh, the priorities of this fund, and of course immediately we are thinking of those most vulnerable co populations. And again, when I say that, we're talking about the elderly, we're talking about children, we're talking about organizations um, who are serving those populations. They're they're going to be stressed. Um, in addition to that, you know, we've got we've got dis, you know we've got the businesses and the employers and um, the, and their employees and the lack of dollars that are going to be available to help get food on the table, to pay rent, to do the things that they need. So again, everything that we can do to coordinate. I loved what Tyler was saying earlier. Coming together communicating, working to, together, having this united, um, this united front to address all this, working with you know, our mayors and our units of government, um, our emergency command systems, all of that working together to address the most pressing needs um, at this time, and that's what we want our fund to be able to help with. Well, Tyler, let, let's move on from that because, I mean, we've talked about the service industry, the restaurant workers, um, that uh, they're still trying to do uh, carryouts, uh, curbside delivery of food. Hopefully people are tipping well to make sure that these workers do get money. But let's say the bartender, that the bar is closed, or, or any other place where indoor dining is no longer allowed in Iowa and Illinois. Um, is there any immediate action that they can take to make sure that they have some kind of a steady income? Yeah, the, the biggest thing, Jim, is to ensure that they keep documenting um, all of the expenses, whether they're a business owner, uh, as an employee, make sure that you're uh, contacting uh, the state that uh, you would file unemployment benefits with. Uh, that's going to be the most immediate need. Uh, there have been some uh, changes within both states as well as on the federal level of different rules that would allow uh, waiting periods uh, to be forgiven. Um, there's other things that will allow um, employees and employers to uh, be sure that they're getting uh, the paychecks that they're desperately needing uh, as soon as they possibly can from uh, both states and through the federal government. Uh, the, the Quad Cities Chamber on our website, quadcitieschamber.com, has a lot of good resources there that uh, people can go and uh, keep up to date on what's happening in uh, both the government side but as well as uh, the whole gamut of COVID-19 as it relates to employees and our employers and our businesses. And I bring it up also because I mean this is a period of uncertainty and, and people may be overwhelmed particularly those who are you know out of work right now or or have their work really reduced to a great deal. What, what do you want to say to those people because we really have to point out you're not doing this alone. Right, we're, we're all in this together. Uh, whether you are in the public sector, 
the private sector, uh, as Sherry is in philanthropy and the nonprofit world, we all have to come together. We all have to ensure that we're all uh, helping each other out where we can. Uh, being the generous quad citizens that we are, uh, we're not going to leave anybody behind. We're going to make sure that everybody is going to be uh, just fine during and after this COVID-19. We have to weather a storm, um, but we're working day in and day out, long, long hours uh, to ensure that the Quad Cities is not only just going to survive uh, COVID-19, but thrive at the end of it as well. And Sherry, sure, I know you want to add to that because, I mean, you want to point out that there is this safety net. I mean, it, it seems like we're free falling right now. Mm -hmm. The panic is there, of course, but uh, you almost want to catch your breath and say, okay, wait, I'll be fine. Yeah, and you know, I think one of the ways, um, I talk about the generosity of this community and it's not just money, it's not just the giving of dollars. I think of the generosity of people's time and their talent um, and their treasure and people giving back um, through all those means. And again, time and time again, I, we see the Quad Cities just really stepping up uh, to fulfill those things. And so I just, I wanna emphasize what you just said. People aren't alone. We are all in this together. Um, we need, an, and I am again, so grateful and for the, the coalition, um, the COED, the community, uh, COED stands for communities, um, organizations um, that are coming together to address disasters. Um, we're working together. Uh, there are so many people um, I mean, our vice president at the Community Foundation is on daily, uh, multiple calls every day with, you know, um, they call it the, I got to get this right, the incident command system, again, which is this unified voice along with the coalition that includes our hospitals, our, our community and public health, um, and so many more organizations. Um, we're, we're doing all we can to stay up to speed on the most critical needs and how um, the dollars that are being given by not just businesses, but even individuals who are going online and giving as we speak, um, how we can invest those dollars to meet those greatest needs. Tyler, let's talk a little bit also is that a lot of people see that the schools are gonna be closed at least until the end of the month, if not into April. Um, there is no seemingly short term to this. I mean, the most optimistic is that, oh, hopefully by the end of the month, things will return to normal. But Tyler, you're not necessarily expecting that? No, I, I think that um, we should be preparing for um, every scenario just uh, so we're not caught off guard as a community. Um, but we're gonna have to listen to the CDC, to our local officials, to uh, the health departments, and uh, listen to the experts who are in this uh, fight every day and are helping guide what we're trying to do. If we listen to them, follow the CDC instructions, uh, we'll get through this. Uh, it might take a little bit longer, but I think that we're gonna be strong because of it in the Quad Cities. And we have great experts here in our community uh, that are helping guide us through a very difficult situation. Um, but we're gonna get there. We're, we're very confident in this community and this region. Uh, and we'll be there, um, I think, sooner rather than later. Well, and I asked Sherry this question, Tyler, I'll ask you that as well, is that, I mean, is there just some kind of a template? Let's be honest, once again, I keep saying it, it's unchartered territory, mm -hmm. unprecedented uh, uh, impact right now. But are there lessons that were learned from past, if I use the word disasters or prolonged events, such mm -hmm. as the flood of 2019, that you're using, once again, almost as a template now? Absolutely. Uh, in the flood of 2019, we came together as a region uh, that I have never seen before. Uh, we saw our community hurting. We saw people um, from all different corners of the Quad Cities region coming down uh, to help sandbag in the flood of 2019 and coming together to uh, be generous in their giving to help people who are affected um, by this. And I see the same thing happening now, Jim, is that uh, we're facing again, a, another crisis, another moment um, that is testing us. Uh, but I believe so much in this community and in our region that we're gonna be there and we're gonna be uh, helping each other when they need it, uh, supporting our small businesses, helping employees who are going through a tough time, helping the parents who uh, might need an extra hand in their kids while they go to work, uh, whether they're nurses or uh, paramedics, people who are working the front lines, we're all gonna help each other. That's, that's the nature of the Quad Cities. That's who we are, that's what we do. Um, and every day we're inspired 
uh, by the people who do this day in and day out, uh, who give us hope that this is only a temporary uh, thing in our community. To a much greater extent, though, compared to the floods of uh, 2019, is the ripple effect that this is going to have, yeah. Tyler. I mean, we're starting with, like we said, smaller businesses being shut down, but supply chains are being interrupted. Larger, uh, and let's be honest, it's a global economy as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to start seeing a greater impact as this continues to ripple through our economy. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to see impacts um, far and wide. Uh, we've already seen that with uh, the stock market, um, with the, as you said, the service industry that are directly impacted. Um, but there are going to be ancillary impacts to it as well, and we need to be prepared for those. Um, and that's why at the Quad Cities Chamber, we're making sure that we're communicating those uh, issues with our um, elected officials on all levels of government, uh, working with our experts in the region. So that way, uh, we're having those strong, steady communications um, that if we do see a problem or we see a need, those are communicated to the right people uh, and doing it very quickly. And Sherry, once again, the Community Foundation is really trying to spearhead as far as the fundraising is, right. is concerned. Uh, how, do, how can people help you? And also, do you have some worries that there may be other funds that are just popping up either on the internet or, or just not necessarily authorized by any group? Yeah, we know that's happening, so uh, I would just encourage people to, if they want to give to the, give to a fund and make sure it's being used uh, in the Quad Cities and for those in the greatest need. And again, I, b let's build on what we learned in that flood. It, there's an immediate need and then there's a long-term recovery need, and we are dedicated to both of those. Uh, we are committed to both of those with the dollars that are being raised. 100% um, will go to the quad citizens um, and to the re both the immediate need and the recovery as we um, unveil all this. And Tyler, a lot of us have our favorite establishments. We love to eat at certain restaurants. We love to go to certain stores that are local. What, what are you telling people during this period of time when the economy is really going to suffer locally? Continue to do what you've been doing. Uh, whether that's uh, taking carry out from the favorite place that you like to uh, go on a Saturday night, um, or whether that's trying the new place down the street. Uh, that's, that's what we're, we're encouraging people to do. Following the CDC guidelines, but still supporting our local businesses, buying a gift card, uh, going online, trying to uh, ensure that uh, they have good reviews, telling your friends or family about a good experience that you had of taking out um, on our industries. Booking a trip, uh, that's, that's gonna be another big thing is, is the tourism side. Uh, we have a lot of hotels and uh, businesses here that um, have already been impacted. Um, the uh, basketball tournament that would be held at the Tax Lawyer Center a few weeks ago that was canceled. Uh, ensuring that we're doing those things to help our, help our community. Uh, be prepared to do a staycation. Enjoy the finest things in the Quad Cities. Enjoy your favorite things and try something new that you might not have um, when the time comes. Um, but continue to support those local businesses. Support uh, those employees who are working there. Uh, and that's, that's a consistent message that we like to keep continuing to talk about. All right. I want to thank our guest, Tyler Power, the Government Affairs Director for the Quad Cities Chamber, Sherry Ristaw of the Quad Cities Community Foundation. Thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Right now, as the nation fights the coronavirus threat, it's also trying to count its citizens. The 2020 census is underway, with many of you getting the census forms in the mail right now. You can fill out the form and send it back by mail or by phone or for the first time by computer. It's census time, and that means it's time to be counted. If you guys can hold on one more second. Many of you are staying home, avoiding crowds, keeping safe. That means concerts are canceled. Local musicians are being kept off the stage. We'll continue to feature some of those artists and their original works, though. Musicians like David G. Smith. Here's David performing Give Your Love Away at Downtown Moline's Black Box Theater. so happy can you tell us why she thought a moment and then replied she said kids i'll do the best i can to say this so you understand happiness becomes a gift you receive when you do this she said give your love away give your 
little love away and go come back to you, she said. Give your love away. David G. Smith with Give Your Love Away. And thank you for joining us for the cities. We want to remind you that WQPT has some great online programs for you and your family. Go to our website at WQPT.org to learn more about PBS Kids program. It includes several interactive apps and games that make learning fun. Plus, check out PBS for Parents with online resources, including a section that helps moms and dads talk to their kids about the coronavirus. It's all free and family friendly. Check it out right now at WQPT.org. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Wheelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Wheelan Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT.